I can adjust it, but live settings are just always so different than when I'm recording. Here's the sewing machine. Ta-da! Welcome, welcome. Hi, Sue. Stitch it, Lisa. Lisa, that is what I'm here for. I'm here to give you ideas that you never realized you could do and to remind you about the things that you have purchased and have never used. I have the Missouri Star orange peel templates that we're going to use today. Fix my ever shrinking down to the floor chair. Aren't they beautiful? I'm using the fun batiks, of course. Okay, hold on. I got to do a little spiel first. Hi, everyone for who's watching the replay. It is 8 minutes to 3. The live stream will be starting at 3 o'clock. This is a live stream video, which means I will be sewing live while chatting with whoever shows up in the chat. During a live stream, it's going to be a very chatty episode or video, however you want to look at it. And at any given time, I could lose my train of thought and never come back to it. Or I could stop and say, hey, let me talk to Lisa or Sue or whoever else happens to show up in the chat and answer their questions. So I hope you enjoy this video. But if you don't like a lot of chatting and back and forth conversations, this may not be the video for you. But I do have over 700 videos that you could check out. Okay, I'm all done. I want to try to remember to put it on there because not everyone realizes that a live stream is chatty. I've been getting a lot of comments that these videos are too chatty and that I don't sew enough and that I'm too distracted, but it's a, it's a live stream. I can't help myself. Sue Smith is in the house. Woo I'm so surprised you came to visit us, Sue. Sue Smith has a very busy, busy daytime and usually can't make it to see us. Hi, so Terry. Apparently my voice is pretty high today. <clears throat> It'll go down, I'm sure, as time goes by. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop and think for a second. Oh. Know me. I got confused. I was I was missing out on the K. I'm like, it's not you know me. I just you know, save people from watching it get halfway through and get frustrated because it's not what they expect what they expect from a live stream, but maybe they don't see too many live streams and they're just there almost wasn't a live stream because I was having so much fun making these blocks, I was just gonna keep on sewing without y'all. Hi, Shirley. Hopefully this will bring me out of backpack mode. I've been making more backpacks because I was doing the video for the tutorial next week. And I have made three more just because they're very addictive and fun to make. We're just going to wait till a little bit after 3 o'clock or if the numbers hit a certain amount of viewers and then we'll start. I don't want to miss anyone who comes in after 3 o'clock. Lock. So there is a Christmas one. I added the bottom to it. This is the one we're making the tutorial with no bottom fabric. And I also had the sunflower one. I didn't use any of the sunflowers. I saved them for a different project and I just used these beautiful fabrics with this fun sparkly fabric for the lining. I had so much fun. Hi Vicki. You've been cutting out squares for an hour? That's the longest part. Sewing a drawstring bag is to sew. Cutting out all the squares and making the little patchwork and then quilting it. I found that I can make one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And that's with using charm squares. So I'm still cutting them. But yeah. Hi, Vicki Lemire. It still takes time. Hope everyone is having a good day. 
I had to leave the house today. I had a one o'clock doctor's appointment, but I know I'm using his last appointment of the day, so I got there at like 12.30, so that I was home by one o'clock to make sure I had enough time. I had only gotten as far as deciding what we were gonna sew today and choosing my fabric. So between about 1.30 after I had some lunch and now is when I did all of this. So these go really quick. Hi, Jackie. Oh, I did sew this one this morning before I left because I wanted something for the picture. This is definitely a one and done. This is, I wanted to see how it would look so you guys can see it without doing the... We're going to do the fusible interfacing technique. I'll show you the two different ways, but my preferred way is so that they look like this. You can see the difference. Let me get one that I already stitched. You'll have to put up with me and see this again later, but you can see the difference between the two, and I think this one looks so much nicer. Hello, Sue. I hope everyone is having a great time. I'm going to refresh the screen real quick just to make sure I am up to speed with everyone before we hit three o'clock. Sometimes the chat is extra delayed if I don't refresh my picture. I had a total weird moment when I first started sewing. I wanted to move the sewing machine a little closer. It was completely off balance. There's no feet underneath this machine. It lays completely flat on the ground, on the table, but it kept rocking like it was an inch off on these two corners, and I couldn't figure out why. Because I'd taken this off to sew the drawstring pouches, two of the quilting clips got stuck underneath, and it was making the machine rock. Because when I set it on the two clips, I'm like, oh my goodness. All right, Jackie, did you try the little wheel trick to see if that would help? Because it doesn't look too horrible for me. See, my quality is at 360. Let me pop it up to 720. Hello, Casuville, 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 Casuville. Oh, from Germany. Oh, I knew it, Barrett. I knew, like, I know your name is something different because I can never say your name, but it's Barrett. Hi, Barrett. Mopping floors, oh. Oh no, Jackie, I know YouTube's been having problems and I can't blame it all on YouTube, of course, but when we're all having the same problems it, and it's on across the channels, then it can't be just one thing. Because you and I don't have the same internet, but if we're having problems seeing things on different channels, then you know. Here's one. I love how this block can switch up. Oh, that's good, Sue. Yeah, every now and then, it's like certain channels, when I watch certain people, it always goes down to 144. And since I'm usually working on something and I don't notice it right away, so when I look up and I'm like, whoa, that's blurry. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad you can make it to a live stream. Yeah, YouTube is. Oh, I'm not a sketchy person. I grew up eating some form of pasta on Wednesdays and Sundays all the time. So after a certain while, I'm like, nope. Oh. Yay. Hopefully I stay back. If I keep going out, I'll just have to stop. I will do a, I'll stop what I'm doing with the live stream and I will record a video and then I'll put it up as soon as possible. That way everyone still gets to see a tutorial. Hopefully it'll stay live now.
quality is great now. Okay, see, that's what I understand, Jackie. I was using the home internet, and then everyone kept saying it was blurry, blurry, blurry. So I switched over to the Verizon with my phone, and it was great. And now all of a sudden, here we go with problems again. So now we're switched back over to the home internet. Yeah, I don't, sh I don't shop at So Yeah either. I'm not into that whole speedy thrill and exciting and the deals aren't all that amazing for me where I can't just get a, a deal somewhere else online or just simply go to the local quilt shop or Joann's or something like that and find what I need. Yay, Sue, we're all back. All right, hopefully we're back. So let's get started. Move my chair out of the way. All right, so today we're gonna make the orange peels. Here is my test block from this morning. And with this one, with the orange peel, I did this one with just an uh, applique, similar to a fusible applique where you just put it down and you have all the raw edges. But what I want to show you today is this technique where there are no raw edges and we are going to blanket stitch it down using the machine. of the Law Nerds channels earlier and they were blurry too. It's just crazy. One second. Part of my problem is, is I have a thumbprint in the middle of my eyeglasses and I can't see. I'm like, why can't I see out of my right eye? Well, because there's a thumbprint or something there. All right, down below in the description box, I put a couple links down for you. There is the Southern Charm Quilts, where they have this large one, and this one will work for a, it looks like it's about a seven inch block, just to give you an idea of it. But there's also a link down below that is a blog post that shows you how to size your own and create your own template for whatever size you happen to need. I am going to be using the Missouri Star quilt templates. I have the small orange peel. It's kind of hard. There you go. Small orange peel. And they have a mini one. This one's for charms. This is for mini charms. And they also have one for a 10 inch square. I put a link down by in the description box. They are on sale today. So if you're interested in getting one of these and you just haven't done it yet, today might be the day to go grab it. I don't know how long the sale is. It might be gone by now. It might have only been for a few hours. But if you're interested, click that link. Don't forget to come back and finish watching the tutorial with us. And you, you'll grab yourself some templates. These are good for not only the orange peel, they also call it a pumpkin seed or a football. Because if you do this in brown, it would look like a football for a kid's football quilt. You can also use these, one second, to make, excuse the dust, but you can also, this one is the little mini one, and this is a small one, and you can make these little stuffed pumpkins. I made, not these, these were sent to me, but I made some with my patrons last year. So as we're coming into Halloween, you can make black pumpkins and white ones, or you can make them for a fall. Or you can not put a stem or anything in it, and just use it as a cat toy or for the babies. The other thing you're going to need is some fusible interfacing. I have to put a weight on it so it doesn't blow away. I've already cut mine out into the little orange peel melon shape. I am using, let me go double check. I am using Pelon P44F. It's a very lightweight fusible interfacing. You don't need anything too stiff in this. There are some that you can use if you're really concerned about it and you want it to wash away. You can use a wash away version, but I find that this is soft enough. I use it in a lot of my quilts and in my bags and stuff. Once it's washed, it's not too stiff. It's still quite soft. It does add a, because of the way we're going to do it, it does add a little bit of a ridge there. So they do stick up a little bit, but having them pop up a little, I don't think it's a bad thing. So let me pick up this and I will show you. 
As I mentioned, this is just a basic fusible applique. You cut it out with a template. I put it down with a glue stick and then I just stitched around it. This is going to fray and everything, and while I don't mind that for appliques, I think for this type of quilt that I consider this to be not an option for me. So if you use the small orange peel, this works with a five inch charm square. Sorry, I get these, when people do comments and stuff here on YouTube, it pops up on my screen. So for the orange peel or the melon here, you're going to need to use a five inch charm square for this. And when we cut it out, you'll see that there's a little bit of waste. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with it, but when you cut it out from the center, you do have these two corners. And my background squares are also charm squares. I happen to have a variety of white on white backgrounds and I'm using a variety of my batiks. So you can stack a few up, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm using my little turntable because it's gonna make it really super easy to cut everything out. So I have four here. Four is about my limit for the comfort. And someone had reminded me recently that if you put the medical tape, it has this like, ridges on it generally when you go and you do blood work and you can buy it's called medical tape specifically it comes in different widths if you put that on it it helps your ruler from not slipping because these little glass templates the plastic templates they slide everywhere yes terry that would work for those they would work fine there is also a version of this that you could sew it like the drunkard's path that you put, it's all sewn together, so you're sewing the curves. So these are actually inset into it, so it's one piece in that applique. But this way is a really quick version to make a, a little table runner or a mini quilt. I have 16 white squares already cut out that were sent to me from one of you amazing viewers. So I thought I would just go ahead and make 16 and see what I can come up with. But I do want to do something with those. I guess I could, oh. Since I cut this out of it, if I cut another fabric out of this, I should be able to sew it back in and it'll just be a smaller block. That's something to play with. So when I put this down now, I, was, I made one block and I was struggling with the ruler sliding around everywhere. So I decided to go ahead and give the tape a try because everyone says how amazing it is. And it's okay, it slides, but it doesn't it doesn't slide like this. And I'm putting them out the same amount of pressure. So you put this on diagonally onto your charm squares. You have a nice sharp rotary cutter. I like to cut the little tips off first because there's a flat spot there. So I'll cut that. And also when I'm spinning this around, that tape keeps this little template from moving. When I was trying to make it with just these, as I moved it, this kept moving around. So that's something to think about. And just take it nice and slow. Make sure you have a good sharp blade. If you go slow around the curve, I'm using a 45 millimeter on my rotary cutter. It's a nice gradual curve, so I don't know if you can do it with a 60, but the 45 works fine. So there I have those two pieces. This is definitely just, you know, trash. You're going to do the same thing with your fusible interfacing. I just went ahead and cut out a bunch of squares, and I just put it down, and I cut them out the same exact way. So there are... Our pieces, remember batiks tend to be reversible, so it doesn't matter which way I use them. So for however many of these orange peels you cut out, you're going to also need to cut out the same amount on your melons. Now on these, I did not worry about cutting the tips off of all of them. Some of them I did, some of them I didn't. So it's not that big of a deal, it's going to be okay.
So let me move these out of the way since we don't need this. I'll pile it behind you and let's just hope nothing falls over. Ha ha ha. See, I have to tidy up as I go. I can't help myself. This is fusible interfacing. You can do it with non-fusible, but the fusible is going to be the little trick for us. So we have a relatively smooth side and with any of the fusibles, when you go to the other side, I don't think you're going to be able to, oh, you might be able to see those, all those little dots and ridges and stuff. That's the glue. You will be able to feel it if you have, I mean, I know some people have problems where they don't have, you have nerve issues and you can't feel very well with your hands. My fingers are pretty well numb, but I can still feel the roughness on this. This is not going to sound right, but we're going to take the roughness and we're going to put it on the right side. I'm just going to keep calling it a melon because that's what my brain wants to do. And I'm going to put right sides together, or what I'm going to consider right sides. So it's the glue side is going to touch the right side of our little melon. Then we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll sew a quarter inch all the way around. I've been sewing it with it on the top, uh, the fusible on the top, just so that it's easy for me to see to make sure it didn't move around or anything. Oh, Carrie, I know it. I just tidy up. I don't, if I don't take it out of this room, I'm okay. I should be able to find it again. If it leaves this room and I put it away somewhere too tidy, I won't find it. I am working, let me move my machine back over. I was working on the buttonhole when you guys showed up, but I have this clear foot compared to the one I usually sew with. So let me see, there we go. So this one's all metal and it has a clear spot in the front. And this one's all clear except for the metal bars. Hi, Jody. Jody, you're not allowed to talk. You can't type. Oh, wait, you said you were a passenger? Oh, okay, never mind. You're a passenger, you're safe. I'm like, you crazy girl, you can't be driving. So that's what I'm gonna use when I do, I haven't tried it before on sewing the melons on, so let's give it a try. I have it set up for a quarter inch. I'm just using a 2.0 stitch length. Actually, I found that if I raise it up to a 2.4, it sews a lot easier. The tighter the stitch length, the more the interfacing wanted to, it wanted to draw in and it was shifting on me and causing problems. Oh, I need the quarter inch for my foot. Hold on. I don't know where the quarter inch is on that foot. So we'll just switch back to this one. The benefit of having snap on feet. Just a quarter inch up to a, I went to 2.4. My machine only does even numbers. It doesn't do 2.5. When I was doing these, I was chain piecing. So when I got to the tip, I forgot to start at the tip, but that's okay. I bring my next piece in and remember to put glue side down on the nice side of the fabric. Line it up the best you can. I tried just having a five inch square of the interfacing and then just sew it like that and then trim it later, but it was a little bit harder to manage. Hi, Lynn, I'm glad you can make it. And then you can just, it's an easy curve to follow. I didn't even have to lift up my compressor foot or anything. So let me just go ahead and get these two. And for whatever reason, I have more interfacing cut than melons, but that's okay. It's nice if you get them all correctly, you know, you sew the perfect quarter inch and stuff, or whatever you can do for a seam allowance. If you haven't perfected your quarter inch, it'll be okay. Your melons will just be a different size. As long as you're catching it, you're catching the interfacing, you're good. And then when I got to the end, I just spun them around, started back at the tip, and 
sew it on down. Make sure you're turning them over so you have, whether if you're sewing interfacing up, you can see the same thing. This one, then I have to turn around. Sue, you sewed a head out of class. Ooh, ooh. So Sue, did you do this version where you're going to have the raw edges? My melons are on the floor. Ha ha ha. I guess you don't hear that very often. I dropped my melons on the floor. Hi, Denise. I'm glad you made it for a live. I know. Shame on you. It's great that you got caught up, though. So this is what it looks like. I have it all stitched on. And then I have it there. Open toe foot for my machine, about a quarter inch foot. Oh yeah, those quarter inch feet that are really, really narrow, those, I don't know, they look kind of cool, but I don't know how well I would like it. Did you tuck your raw edges under, Sue? and do the hand applique that way, or did you just applique it down so that the, I don't know what the applique stitch is, I, that's beyond my knowledge right there. I can do all the different kinds of applique, just I haven't done it very often, so I don't know how well. So we have these four little orange peel melons. And what you wanna do is you wanna separate Make sure you guys can see. You want to separate it so that we're going to put a slice into the interfacing. Oh, you blanket stitched the raw edges like I'm doing on this one. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mine's still fray unless I make it tight enough. Oh, here's my scissors. Carrie, that's a great idea too. When your machine allows it, if you can move the needle over, like this machine, I can move the needle over because I'm right now my brother is eh, I can move it a little bit but this one when I turn it on it has a button to push for the quarter inch and it does it perfectly so I am using the Kai scissors they have this really really sharp point it's very helpful I can go and just gently pop it at least I did it on all of the other ones if I just put a little hole in it and you can use your seam ripper and you want to just make a slice you don't need to go tip to tip because we want to have some of the fusible up here still, but I just put a nice slice in it. Oh, Teresa, that sounds like fun. I enjoy just sitting back and doing some hand quilting. I've decided that I am reaching the burnout point, so I told my body this morning that we are taking Sunday off. We are going to sit in the living room. My brain says, oh, you can go ahead and work in the shop. That's what I call the shop here. And I said, nope, we're gonna sit in the living room and we're just gonna work on some hand embroidery, put movies on and just relax on Sunday. I take thumb and finger and I just bring out that one point. I'm not gonna make it really pointy. I just wanna make sure that I'm turning it through this area and getting all my batik on the right side. And this is gonna put the glue on the other side of our little melon piece. Yeah, I need a chill day. I need to get caught up on my embroidery and I need to do something where I'm not sitting at the sewing machine because my back is hurting, I I'm getting headaches and, and I'm just super tired. So I just need to, thanks Lynn, I just need to you know, move my position, my, my little recliner chair. I don't recline it, but I've got a rocking recliner and it's, it's, my body knows that's like my comfort spot. When I sit in my chair, I'm like, oh, my body just like kind of molds into it. So I think I just need a day like that. After I sweep and mop and vacuum and do all that stuff. So after you have it turned around, I like to take my little flamingo point turner and here's the thing I like to pay attention to. You know it must be important because I'm coming up close. 
I can see my seam allowance from the orange fabric here. When I go under, I want to make sure I'm under the orange because if I go between the orange and the interfacing, I can easily just rip through that. This interfacing is so lightweight that it just tears. So I push my corner out and I don't go super crazy. You can do a little wiggle motion. Sorry, I'm too close and blurry. And sorry if I'm talking too loud because I'm up close. And then I know it's extra, but then I set that down and I take my crochet hook because it has a nice rounded tip. This tip is still a little pointy pointy. And then I run it underneath the fabric again so that I'm underneath it and I just roll it so that I'm bringing all the orange fabric out. And then I even go a little extra and I make sure I can just do that little wiggle and give it a little finger press to make sure the interfacing is not sticking out. So the glue is here now and then my fabric. And you also, you could take a little brayer, little roller, this little wooden iron here, and just press it really nice and neat. So let me get these done. Does anyone have any questions? Pam's Country Girls, I've been with your video. I've been sewing. I'm not sure. What are you sewing, Pam? Are you working on something fun? This is a really good chain piecing type project. You do each section, you do a few, or you can do all of them if you want. And just pop each one out. Don't get overly excited and try to go too fast when you're doing this because you'll pop it out and you'll have to get a new one and start all over again. Because trying to re-sew it doesn't always work. Just smooth that out a little bit. I mean, we are doing applique, so it's not going to be always 100% perfect, at least not when I do it, but I'm going to try my best. It'd be nice if I don't see this. Now, since I'm using a white background, hi Donna. Since I've got the white background, my interfacing, if it peeks out, is not going to show too much. But if I take my right thumb and I put it on top and my pointer finger underneath and I kind of roll my thumb up while my finger is pushing down, I can make sure that as I'm pinching that, that hopefully this is just the fabric that's popping out. But then when you get over to the iron, you know, it's, it's whatever happens, happens. So let me bring up the iron and the pressing station. a few questions this you might be able to see there's a TV tray here I took the top of it off of a TV now I've been replacing the covering for a while before I got my wool mats but this time hi Marie I have the wooden table I put a piece of tin foil on because people say that tin foil helps reflect the heat up then I have two layers of batting and I have a layer of this birdie fabric so then I would put staples all around it, and anytime you wanted to change the fabric, you had to change the staples. But Lisa Cape and Quilt said to just go ahead and eat, she would, I think she stitched hers a couple stitches by hand or put a drawstring or something on it. I'm not sure if she used the safety pins, but I decided to put the safety pins on because I don't worry about the surface that I'm putting it on. So when I need to change this fabric, I can just take the safety pins out, take the fabric off and put new one on. And I also put some packing tape on just to keep this from flying away. Hi, Carrie. So that's what I do for this. For those of you that have asked questions in the past, I am not putting my iron directly on my cutting mat. There is a thick piece of wood here that is protecting the surface. Now, hopefully the iron has heated up. I can't because it's the iron that's cordless and I set it down. I could set it down. I have, I have one of these. So I could set it on here if I wanted to, but since it's cordless, it does have to go back to the base. But I think I will set this here for when I'm doing this. So I have my fabric. I don't fold it or find any kind of creases or anything like that. You have the birdie fabric? 
it is a fun fabric. I have several yards of it, so I thought I would give some to my pressing station so I can look at it. I like to use this a lot too if I'm using the fusible interfacing, uh, the heat and bond stuff, so that it doesn't get onto my wool mat. I take one of my melons and we're going to put it diagonally corner to corner on our background fabric. And I just eyeball it to see there and there. You could measure it if it's. I know some people like to be very particular. I'm just kind of happy with, okay, that looks good. You can follow the rules for whatever your facing says. I just kind of do what I want, basically what it is. Oh, great idea, Jackie. A pillowcase would work nice. Then it would slip off really nicely. I hit it, not give it a little steam. It's not super permanent. I don't always go to the... Gosh darn it. When you're using white on white, maybe pay attention to make sure you put it on the right side. I'm going to totally cheat. See how easy it is to pull up still? And I'll flip it over and now I have probably some residue down there. Oh, that wasn't a good idea. It's all steamy. Okay, changed my mind. I don't want to do that. And then I'll put it on there. I find that the interfacing does peel up relatively easy. It does leave residue on the back, so it will make it a little sticky back there. So then I'll pay attention better for this one. Again, just eyeball it. We'll put these four on and then we'll move over to the sewing machine and we'll sew some more. It if you wanted your melons to be puffy, you can make a small slice here, put some a little stuffing in there, some shredded up batting or some fiber fill, and then just take a piece of fusible interfacing and use it like a band-aid to close up that hole. That's a great way to sneak a little trapunto into a project you're working on. It's also a good way if you need to remove, if you use like a template or something and you need to remove it from your applique. See, I told you, I knew a little bit of applique stuff. All right, Lisa, we'll be here. This won't be a long episode or visit or live stream today. We're not working on anything too super fancy. So if anyone has any questions about this project or anything for me or those, oh, thanks, Marie, I appreciate it. So if anyone has any questions when we get going towards the end, you know, feel free to ask them now, ask them later. We're not doing a super complicated project. I mean, look how far we've gotten already. I talk a lot. Just put this guy away, put him between the table legs and the desk. Stop for some hydration. Okay. My sewing machine has a buttonhole stitch. I know not every machine does. A lot of basic machines will have a buttonhole stitch. You could just do a straight line stitching and just stitch it down because these edges will not play because they're all, they're, the seams are all encased in the interfacing and folded underneath everything. So it's all hidden underneath here and we don't have to worry about anything fraying. So here's a peek again at what it looks like up close when we do the buttonhole stitch. I chose to stick with a white thread. I tried all of my threads by pulling them out and laying them onto my batiks and I couldn't find one that looked good with all of it and I really didn't want to try. Buttonhole. Button, button, button. Who's got the button, Jody? Thank you so much, Pam. So I used the buttonhole. You can use anything. There is there's all kinds of stitches. What I did is I took, since I'm using batiks, I took a white piece of fabric and I took two strips from my scrap bin of my batiks and it only took me one try. Exactly what the buttonhole does when I turned my machine on, it was perfect for me. I liked the spacing. I liked how far it jumped over into the fabric and the size of the bite it was. You're welcome, Denise. This is a great version. I think it gives you a nice look without having to do the curved piecing. And I know not everyone likes to have raw edge applique. 
there is a line of stitching that goes onto the white fabric in between each of the bites. So I thought if I didn't get it perfect that I'd rather have my thread match my background than match my applique. And I think that's one of the tips and techniques that they say anyways when doing applique to match your background versus your actual applique. I could be completely wrong and it could be depending on what you're doing, but for me this works really well. So let's go ahead My chair is just a little bit taller than I am, so I have to kind of like lift myself up into it. I feel like such a child sometimes. I'm going to consider over in this area, like the straight edge of it. I did start one up here, and I felt that this was a little bit too much of a curve for me, so that if I started down here, that it was more straight, and I felt it was easier to start and to go around. Now I think the hardest thing is going to be making sure you go slow enough to keep your stitches properly on here and then what you need on the background. But the corners where you pivot is usually the hardest part for anyone when they're doing machine applique. Oh, that's not what I want. That's the Teflon foot. I am not an expert. I just do trial and error and I keep practicing until I get it right. Maybe consider the first few of them in scrap fabric that you're going to use. Maybe turn it into a hot pad since you have that little extra firmness to it. The interfacing is going to stay in there. It doesn't wash out the type I used, even though there is the kind that does wash out. So let me find it on my machine. I have to press buttons. Bear with me. They have a little Mickey Mouse hand with a glove on it. I kind of always like that. And then number one. Yeah, I didn't have to change. As I said, I didn't have to change anything. It looked great. By using this clear foot, I can line it up and see. I'm really great. I use this A foot with a little plastic. Actually, this is from my old brother's sewing machine that I had from the beginning of when I was doing YouTube. Carrie, I thought about doing black, and I love black blanket stitch. I love it. But on this project, I thought with the white background that I might be better off going with white. Either way, it's going to show up on the melon part of it. But I was concerned about too much of a black line on the background if I didn't get it quite right. There's a couple times where I went a little too fast and I got a little off, and my straight line is on the melon which is a little bit noticeable only because I'm this close and looking at it. But if you make it into a quilt and quilt it and everything, I don't think it would be noticeable. But I love the way black pops against an applique piece. So if you have an option of a clear foot or somewhere where it's open enough that you can see where you need to follow and where you need to put your melon, there is a slice right in between here, I guess, to move your thread out of the way and stuff. And I found that if I line it up right in that little slice of my foot, that it works really well. I definitely say anytime I do any type of stitch, even when I do my fabric postcards, and I've done a million of them, well, you know, a few hundred, I still test it out first before I bring in the fabric postcard because maybe I like something different today or maybe I forgot that I moved the needle one click to the left or something like that. So it's nice to have a little notebook or a little sheet. Some people make a quilt sandwich or just fabric or something and they stitch out all the stitches and they write notes on it so they know what they like. I actually turn my sewing machine down because I am a speed demon when I sew and that keeps me from going too too fast and yeah sometimes it takes me a couple stitches to get used to it and it took me a couple of these melons to realize I slow down when I get close to the tip and I want my needle to be in thanks Vicki I noticed that I want my needle to be in my batik when I turn the corner it takes two stitches in the background and then it goes into the batik and then I can turn a corner, trim my thread, and then I can start again. 
So that's why it's nice to have a couple in the beginning that you can practice on and see how the stitch stitches out and how you like it. And if you have, thank you so much, Barrett. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Donna. I love sending out the postcards. Uh, slow down the speed so you're forced to slow down. Now I find that my block when it's done is a little bit crinkled up just slightly. So you can give it a nice press afterwards. You can use the clear nylon thread so that you can't see the stitches at all if you don't look. Oops, there we go, get back in line. So if you use that, they say to put regular cotton thread or whatever you normally use in the bobbin and to only use the nylon thread in the top of the machine. So it's going to take some time. This is not like a super fast way to do it. I mean, it's not a it's not a slow project. And then I can back stitch. And there we go. Let me come in slowly. You can see my little oops there. I have uh, several of them just because I was talking and got myself out of line. So now that you have that, and like I said, you can choose any stitch you want to go ahead and get your applique to stay down. And then you can play with them. They can be, I saw this one where they used green on Pinterest. Let me see, I have some green. And then the green. Another. Oh, look, we have another. Okay, so then they had this, and they had it in a table runner. Thanks, Ter oh, sorry, thanks, Carrie. I got my tongue tied. So then it went up and up, and then they did like. A flower up at the top. Oh, I don't have any more pinks. So I thought that was really pretty. So you can have this, maybe you can even use it like a growth chart or put a different flower up at the top if you don't want to use these. Have you tried scrappy orange peel blocks? I made fabric from crumbs, then cut out the orange peels. Scrappy in the version that I used whatever I had on hand. Yes, scrappy as in crumbs. No, I don't think so. I have a vague memory that I might have made one, but I don't think I've made like a whole bunch of them to use at all. But I think it would work out really good, especially if, okay, the five inch charm size would be good, but if you got the larger one and you used it with the 10 inch squares, that would be a really great use. You can use the, the string blocks. You can sew some type of string. You can do, let me put this up on my curtain for a second and see on my, oh yeah, you can get a lot of crumbs onto one. That'd be really fun. I think it would be great if you color coordinate it. Hold on. Nikki uses three straight stitches, then change to the buttonhole stitch for the rest, then back to straight stitch to over stitch and lock it in at the end of the run stitches. No chance buttonhole will pull out. Thank you, that's an excellent tip. I am not super experienced with using the buttonhole. I tend to, I will buttonhole by hand, usually before I buttonhole by machine. When I do applique, I don't have it on these machines, but my old original brother, it had this really great, like a, if you're repairing a sock or something, it had a really great stitch with a whole bunch of X's like that I can make just the right size and it would cover a raw edge applique and it would never fray. I love that stitch. I think it'd be great. I was, I'm thinking, I only have 16, so I don't know if I can do a table runner or if I do a table topper. So if you do them and you have a set of four, if you do a four patch and you make them all into circles, let's 
so you'll have you'll have this effect where you'll see circles in some of them and X's in others. following what I did in the last ones. This is a really pretty fabric. So you get this really look and I, this nice look and I love all of these colors. My machine has a locking stitch so I hit that at the beginning and end of each applique piece. Thanks, Jody. Isn't it really pretty? You can get, you can see how the green make a circle here. So Missouri Star seven years ago did this with blue fabric on a white background. If you when you when you do a quick search either here on YouTube or Google for the orange peel quilts and stuff, their video is like one of the top ones, of course, that pop up. And hers is in blue and white, and you can see on how how you look at it whether or not you'll see the circles or if you see like the X's and stuff. And it makes a really lovely quilt. And as you can see, doing it this way, it's not that hard. Now, doing it with the curves, I, I'm okay with curves. It's, I was born with an okay to sew curves and everything like that. I watched a whole bunch of, well, I watched, I read a whole bunch of blog posts and stuff when I made my first uh, Drunkard's Path type blocks and stuff like that because those are really popular when people were doing on the quilt blogs and stuff back when. It's still pretty popular, of course. But I learned how to do it in a different way and it just I do pretty good with curves, so I wouldn't mind doing that. But this is a really quick and easy way to get this look. So if anyone has any questions on this technique or another technique or maybe someone needs to find a certain fabric or if you're looking for whatever, you know, we'll bring it open to questions now if anyone has any questions. We have some really smart people here in the chat that can help you out. Singer Patchwork. That's a machine, right? Thank you, Maria. I think it's really pretty. And I went with just the 16 so that I can have something and make something pretty and get it finished and not leave it sitting into my bins because I'll show you what I have just in this room right now. Not counting the charm packs, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven containers with a variety of projects in each that I just I just haven't gotten back to. I really want to get back to some of these, so I don't I want to I don't want to create another another project that's not going to get finished. We might need to do a, a whip projects next year where we all just hang out and sew on our projects. Here, we'll finish up this year with the variety of blocks that we're doing on the live streams and maybe next year if you guys are interested we can work on some some like mini quilts some wall hanging some table runners so each month we work on a project and you know either we'll, we'll figure out a project to do together or I'll see if I have a kit somewhere here in the house or we'll just find something free online and we'll all either hang out together and chat or we can work on the same project together Thank you, Michelle. I went and pulled out some of the lighter colors of the batiks that I had in Charm Squares. It's just really, when you have these types of colors in the batiks, even the dark ones, they're still really pretty, and I just think you can't go wrong with it. Ellen, you're up for a whip chat? Yeah, if I have a whip that I can either link to my videos that we worked on in the past, or I can link it to a place online somewhere, then thank you, Nikki. Then you guys can either, you know, create a new whip yourself or just work on your own. Because I know most of the time you guys hold this information for later. You work on your own projects now and maybe maybe a couple weeks from now you'll work on this while I'm doing a different live stream for something else. 
that's generally what I do is I don't always sew along with whoever's on the live stream. I usually work on whatever I need to and I just watch and I listen, I have my headphones on and I get an idea of what's going on and if I'm excited about it, I'll create a new whip for that one. Yeah, Denise, that's what I like. I like to just listen to people, sew and chat. I always worry that, especially the Juki is a very loud sewing machine, I always worry that it drowns everything out. And, 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 but you guys know when you come here, our chances are I'm going to sew something. So you expect that the sewing machine is going to be on. Let's turn these all in the same direction. They almost feel like snails to me because they have that, that look to the bottom of them. This orange is really pretty. I'd set these charm squares aside because I wasn't going to use them for anything unless it was something really special and I was just going to stare at them. Now this isn't as exciting. It wasn't that loud. Oh, thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. Exactly, Ellen. I have, I've been, okay, what I've been doing is I was watching some of the things on my Watch It Later list because it's over a thousand videos now, but I've actually gone back and I've watched the Stitch TV show. I think they have maybe six seasons of it. I went back to the very first one because I don't always want to watch TV. All right, Nikki, back to work. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for stopping by. I don't always want to watch like Psych or Monk or well, I watched the Hallmark movies in July. That wasn't too bad because they're two hour movies. But if I have to keep finding something to watch, it just drives me crazy. So I was watching the Stitch because it's quilting talk while I'm quilting. While I'm knitting, I like to listen to knitting stuff. So if everyone's good and nobody has any other questions, I guess we can just let you guys go so you can have a nice weekend. You know where I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be in here sewing on these tomorrow get them all machine stitched down and at least turned into a top. So if this is five inches, so it'll be four and a half. So that'll be 18 by 18 square. So it stitches on YouTube, yes. If you, if you just look up Stitch, it's not gonna work. You have to watch, you have to search for Stitch TV show and it'll pop up. Here, let me see if I can, if I can pull it up. I can't see the chat anymore. I can pull it up, I will put it in the comments. Because I, if you go to their playlist and you go to season one and you save that playlist into your playlist, then you can just watch it. If you play the first video, it just plays all the way through until you're at the end of the season. They do, the first season they do one episode a month and then I know in the second season they go to two episodes a month copy link address come back over where I can see the comments I don't guarantee it but try that yeah so they have six or seven I'm just gonna sit there even though I've watched them they they stopped producing a few years ago so it's been a while you figure if they have six seasons it's been at least six years since i watched the first one so i will go through bye vicky you have a great weekend and i'll just re-watch them even though I, they're very familiar it's like hanging out with your friends here on youtube because i've watched the videos already and i know their personalities and how they are insul shine different than insul bright i want to say someone was mentioning it somewhere is it, does it do the same purpose, Jackie? Or are you just wondering if it's the same? Yeah, Lynn has her own channel. She talks about, she brings out like an orange crayon because orange is her favorite color. And she's like, okay, we're gonna talk about this today. I, I never unsubscribe from people like that because she came back on the same channel and directed us over to her new one, I think. So that's what I watch. Washable bag thermal lining. For doing like coolers and stuff, Excuse me, reaching in front of you. That would be really cool. I haven't made a cooler. I wonder if it would work good for like uh, can cozies. 
Maybe that's where I saw it, Jackie, when I was looking up Inselbright. Because the name sounds familiar, but I've never used it. I'm up for anything sometimes. I mean, sometimes I'm very happy with what I'm look at, working on, but how do you know if there isn't something that's more of your favorite until you try it? I don't have a design wall anymore. So I play with it and then I bring out my phone and I look through my phone to see what it looks like and see if I like it. And if I like it, I snap a picture. All right, so that's an upside down version of when the leaves are going up. But I like this even better than just like having them all lined up. I'm not too thrilled with them. Yeah, I, I haven't tried it yet. I did go to the thrift store. My, my doctor is right next to the thrift store. Unfortunately, this was my last visit with them. They sold their company to the local health system that owns all the hospitals. So they're moving to a new building. I have no but I won't be able to pop into the thrift store anymore. So this is Aqua Magic. It is 12 inches by 5 yards for $10.95. I got it for $3. Brand spanking new. Water soluble. What do they call it? Stabilizer. Soft fabric like stabilizer. So I can't wait to play with this. You misplaced six packages of Inselbright. Oh no. Denise, if we don't find it for you, if you go to the link that I put in for the stitch and you go to like their most recent videos, she'll be on there and she'll tell you exactly where to click. But let me see. Cotton Art Studio for quilting, chat, and fun. I can't see the comments right now, so I'm just going to pull up her video so I can give you guys the link to her new one. Copy link address and it's got plastic wrap on it. Marie, are you talking about that insulin stuff? That means sorry, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, no, it does. It looks like foil. I never, I've never used it before. So there's the link, Denise, for you. Yep, Sue's got it. Cotton Art Studio. So I thought, oh, there's two different price tags on here. So I thought for $3, that was pretty good because I want to play with this. I have some already, but I couldn't pass up $3. So any other questions? Are we all good? So I'm going to hit the stop button if everyone's good. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy watching. If you've never seen the Stitch Show, enjoy watching it. They talk about threads. They, they tell silly stories about themselves. They, they're, they're quite comical. I really enjoy listening to them. But they talk about patterns and quilting, and they talk about batting and different uses of everything. So if you're new to quilting or you just want to listen to people talk about quilting, that is a great thing. I watch my normal people in the morning. But by 11 o'clock, I've watched everything on view, on view on YouTube that I want to watch. So it's great to hang out with other stitchy people. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, and thank you so much for putting up with the problems that we had in the beginning. Bye.